All right. The term navigate the internet, or the phrase navigate the internet, is browsing the internet, surfing the internet. Um, basically what that means is maneuvering, going from one website to another. Now, Internet Explorer, as do other browsers, provides commands accessible from the toolbar. Um, a history list, which identifies which websites you have visited recently, or have been visited recently, by that browser on that computer. And you can pull down the history list and go back to a recently visited site simply by clicking that site name or URL. The address bar is a text box. Uh, technically it's a uh, combo box. It's a text box with a drop-down list uh, that allows you to type in the URL of, an ad, of a website to which you want to go. Remember that URL is the formal name of a web address. You would click in the address bar and type in www whatever.com. Okay. Uh, performing commands using the toolbar. Remember that there's a back button and a forward button. Now in Internet Explorer, there a blue circle with a white arrow pointing to the left is back, pointing to the right is forward. That allows you to go back to the previous page that you were at. Now here it says the back button returns to the home page. No, it returns you to the previous page you were at. The forward button will not become available until you've clicked the back button once. So you've got to take a step back in order for the forward button to appear. And if that forward button is available or um, active, you can click the forward button to go forward one page. And again, I'll try to demonstrate that in a subsequent video lecture. All right, a screen tip. We've talked about this before also. Screen tip is that small little note that kind of pops up by your mouse pointer. If you hold your mouse pointer over a button or a hyperlink or a picture or some other object, the screen tip may appear with just a very brief description of what this is or what its purpose is. Now, screen tips are not on every single element in a web browser. Okay, Certainly not necessarily is it in every single element of a web page. And I want to make sure you understand the difference between browser elements and the page elements. Okay? The hyperlinks are page elements. The back button and forward button are browser elements. The address bar is a browser element. Okay. Sometimes it's very difficult to distinguish between um, which ones are browser elements, which ones are page elements, but hopefully you'll get a feel for that as you learn more about um, navigating the Internet. Okay. And this table, um, again, in your textbook, uh, it's on page 7 for me, um, hopefully it's on page 7 for you, is a list of Internet Explorer elements and their descriptions. Again, this does not cover every single element, uh, but I would like you to familiarize yourself with them. Once again, these are primarily browser elements, but I would argue that the links are page elements, web page elements. Okay. Again, some more elements of the web browser. Uh, the refresh button, the home button, the stop button, stop or cancel button. Okay. And again, I would ask that you familiarize yourself with these elements. And again, the difference between the element, the browser element, and the page element is that the browser elements are not going to change as you change web pages. Okay. When you change to a different web page, you may or may not have a text box like they have here on this uh, Microsoft Live Search. The page, page elements are going to differ from one page to the next, but your browser elements are going to stay the same. 
All right, here's that part of the web address that I wanted to talk about. I'm going to get in more detail of this in a separate video, as I said. Uh, I don't know if this is displayed in your textbook or not, but what they've got is they've got this web address broken into three parts. Now, I'm going to discuss these three parts, but I'm going to show you how we can break it down even further uh, later on in a different video. Okay? So this first part, the HTTP, okay? that's called the protocol. HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, is the standard protocol for websites. It is not the only protocol for websites, and it is not the only protocol that, um, that browsers can use. Uh, they mention another protocol is FTP, or File Transfer Protocol. Um, yes, but there's also HTTPS, the S being Secure, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or Secure. Okay. Now, you don't have to type in the HTTP every time you want to type in an address. It will, your browser will assume HTTP. Now, if your web address is not HTTP, if in fact it is an FTP site or a secure HTTP site, then you'll have to type in the HTTPS or the FTP, respectively, in order for it to work. Okay. The next three characters, the colon, forward slash, forward slash. We identify these as a forward slash because in English we read from left to right, and so this forward slash is falling forward from left to right. So that's what we call that a forward slash, or it's leaning forward. These three characters, um, identified by Internet creators for separating the protocol from the rest of the web address. Okay, um, so we just refer them when you type in the protocol. If you're going to type in the protocol, you also have to type in the colon, forward slash, forward slash, and then the domain name, which is the third part down here. Now, this domain name begins with www. Uh, Delta College's domain begins with www. However, know that not all domain names include the www. So, the domain name, in this case, includes the abbreviation for World Wide Web. Um, the name of the organization, this example is FirstGov. And then what's called the domain type or top-level domain name, GOV. Now, we've seen probably .edu for Delta, uh, .com for commercial sites, .net for usually... Um, companies that provide network services, but not always. Uh, but there's GOV for government, there's .org um, for uh, nonprofit organizations. There are many, many types of top-level domain names now. If we backed up 10 or 15 years, there were a very few number of types of top-level domain names. Now there are more than I can think of. Um, also keep in mind that some companies, uh, excuse me, some countries have their own top-level domain names, um, like CA for Canada, FR for France, and US for United States of America. But you got to be real careful with them, because not every country has its own two-character top-level domain name, and some of them get kind of tricky because Remember that many countries use their, say their country name differently using different letters than we do in English. Okay? Um, for example, Germany. In Germany, they don't call themselves Germany. They call themselves Deutschland. Um, so um, we can't just say GE for Germany or GR for Germany. Okay? So you have to, um, if you want to search for websites, using country top-level domain names, you'll have to look those up. And there, there is a list out there on the Internet. You could maybe do a Google search for them. 